All right, we're on the corner of Valley View and Ramrod. We're gonna get some fish and chips. This place is called the Codfather. I like it, let's try it. So, uh, Matt, the Codfather, introduce yourself. I'm Glenn. I'm, a, I'm Glenn. the owner of the Codfather. Tell me about the name Codfather. Is it just a play on Vegas it's, mobsters? It's just a, a fantastic name for it. Play on words. Sure. Play on words. Just. There's well, you so can't help but laugh when you. Well, that's it. It makes people smile. It makes people remember what they're, what I just, they're coming for. I just saw on the menu that you have poutine. I got to tell my Canadian friends. Yeah, we've got poutine. You're covering all the imperial cities and that's countries. It's all part of the Commonwealth. It's the Commonwealth. All of, all of the, all under one, one and, umbrella. And you had mentioned, I don't know, can we mention this, what you just told me a minute ago, that you used to cook with Kiss? I cook for Kiss, yeah. Wow, part of the Kiss family. Look at that. Right in my own, my own neighborhood. So, so, so wanted to be part of the, part of the absolutely. Part of Kiss. Oh, it's great. It's so, you know, if you're a Vegas local or you're visiting uh, and you've got to hanker in for some fish and chips or some poutine, I want to come back and try, what's this, the, you have the Kevin. Kevin, Kevin's a burrito. It's a Fish burrito. Fish and chip burrito. It's got haddock and chips and mushy peas and tartar sauce and coleslaw, a few chips and then a piece of haddock. And then you had the Sheffield fish cake. Sheffield fish cake, that's my hometown. So in Sheffield, if anybody knows, it's, it's kind of a, you know, they like. I've never had that, like, but I'm going to try it. Two slices of potato, it's fish between it and it's battered and deep fried. I like it. All right. Giant helping of fish, two pieces. Ow, that's hot. Got some nice fries. I mean, chips. So sorry. These are mushy pea fritters. I never heard of these. Um, it's basically mushy peas, deep fried. We're gonna try those out, see how it is. It's very, very hot, fresh out of the grease. Let's go. Now, I know I have a lot of viewers in the UK and Australia, but I also have a lot of viewers here in Las Vegas. So if you're watching in the UK or Australia, fish and chips is kind of a way of life. It's something you're used to. This probably won't impress you much. But if you live here in the United States, or if you live out in the middle of the desert uh, in Las Vegas, it's harder to find certain things. But the great thing about the melting pot that is Lo Las Vegas is there's a lot of different ethnic types of foods. You find a lot of Asian foods, Hawaiian, Thai, Japanese sushi, Chinese. Then you have a lot of your South American flair, Mexican, Peru, Ecuador, Cuba. Uh, then you find Ethiopian, you find uh, African food, stuff from all over the world. Now the UK, Australia, Canada, all of the imperial places, that's where you're gonna find your basic British stuff. All right, let's start with the fry, the chip. All right, served, it's just naked. There's no salt or anything on it. That's to be expected. A lot of people, they don't want a lot of salt. You got a lot of dietary restrictions. So I can't ever judge something just the way it comes. They give you this big vat of salt. I like a lot of salt. Heinz tomato ketchup. I'm an American. I like good old fashioned ketchup on my fries. I mean chips. So now with a little salt ketchup, much better. Standard fare. You know, basically, you know, I've never lived in the UK, but I've been there. I visited London, Windsor, Manchester, Edinburgh, Scotland. I've been to Australia, been to Sydney, been to Canada. So, I've had fish and chips. Now, I know I'm gonna get a lot of bunk for this, but I'm not a fan of curry. Not a big fan of malt vinegar. I understand that it's kind of a staple, but if you grew up eating that, that's probably what you're into. I didn't, it's not a fav favorite of mine. Not a big fan of vinegar. Okay. This fish is the size of my head. I'm gonna try to get a piece of this here. It's nice and greasy, steam coming off of it. I like it. Let's try it naked.
flaky, crispy on the outside, a little bit chewy and doughy on the inside. I haven't got a chance to really get the fish because that's just the edge here. Let me try to get some here. It's nice and greasy, which I like. Let's check out just this fish. Wow, look at the steam coming off of that. It's hot out of the fire. Mmm, so hot. It's a nice, fresh tasting fish. Doesn't taste fishy. Nice piece of cod. I like it. I don't know, my Brits can tell me in the comments. What's the etiquette? Should it be eaten with a fork and a knife? Or do you eat it with your hands? I know Americans, we're kind of barbaric. We like to eat with our hands. I think the proper way to do this would be to take your knife, apply a little bit of your tar tartare, I've noticed the difference between Americans and Brits. Americans will hold their knife and their spoon like this, shovel. A Brit will hold it like this, stab. Much like this, take their, their thing. Where's American? Am I right? Tell me in the comments. Fish is very good. Mushy pea fritter. Never seen this before. And it's exactly as it sounds. It's mushy peas fried. I'll say that mushy peas Tastes a lot like mashed potatoes, honestly. Not an incredible amount of flavor. Um, they do taste like peas, but not very strong. It's kind of more of a filler and a texture. I can imagine that dishes like these, sort of like beans on toast, are dishes that when people during the war, post-war England, living on the dole, didn't have a lot of money, had to figure out ways to get full for cheap. And sometimes when you encounter home cooking, soul food, this type of food, it's based on your economic situation. Everybody knows I love beans on toast. And the things that I love about British food and American home cooking, like meatloaf, where you take meat mix it with bread and other fillers, the things that make those great and tasty was American or British or wherever you're from. It's the ingenuity of taking your ethnic food, stretching it out to be the most filling for the money. Italian food does that as well. So, I don't know, what do you mix a mushy pea with? Ketchup, or tartar sauce, or just salt? Let's just try a little salt. I would think like a butter. Let's get back to this fish. Ooh. Wow. So hot and fresh and steamy. Wow, look at that. I found that when you try to dip into the tartar sauce. When you have a good flaky fish, it just flakes off into your sauce. So I think applying it with the knife is the technique. All right, just to appease the naysayers out there, I'm gonna put a little of the malt vinegar on it, try it, just a drop. See if my opinions of palate has changed. Okay. 
I can see. I get it. It adds just a little bit of texture to it. A little bit of little bit of spice. Tell me down in the comments what you like to put on your fish and chips. Spicy? Sriracha? Some other kind of thing? Maybe you're from Texas and you put ranch on it. This is so weird. It's not bad. It's exactly what you expect. It's, um... If I was blindfolded and somebody gave me this, I would think it was a deep-fried mashed potato. It's kind of what it tastes like. I think it needs butter. Now, I'm not sure what the traditional method of making this would be, but if I was the chef, I think I would add maybe uh, maybe an onion powder, a little bit of a salt, or a little bit more of a butter to it, just to add what you would put on peas. But maybe it's supposed to be very British and bland. Oh my gosh, I am stuffed. I had to take some to take away to go. The Codfather fish and chips right here on Green Valley and Ramrod. Lots of good stuff in this little shopping center. You got some Thai food here that I want to try one of these times. And then uh, something I'm dying to check out over here. The Queen of Hearts. They do tea and scones and stuff. You have to have a reservation. 100% we're going to be doing that. And then over there, it's those guys' pizza. I've had their pizza. It's fantastic. A lot of good stuff in this little shopping center. Um, it's kind of hidden out of the way, you know? I mean, like if you, uh, it, there's a La Bonita, you know, the, the Spanish supermarket over there. It's, this is a great little area. I love living over here. It's kind of, they call it Whitney. Um, we all just call it Las Vegas, the people who live here. But <clears throat> you always have little sections of neighborhood with different names on it. So my area is called the Whitney or Whitney Mesa, where I live. Um, if I was a little bit further down, I would be in Henderson. Henderson is it's kind of one of those places that's like, okay, like a little bit higher class than Las Vegas, and then the newest place is called Summerlin. Summerlin's for the people that don't really want to live in Las Vegas. They're just trying to avoid taxes, and they move from California. Summerlin has like no soul whatsoever. I don't know how much Summerlin stuff we're going to do. <laughs> People in Summerlin are going to be all pissed at me. Hey, what are, you, like, what are you talking about? Those are the people who say Nevada that drive us crazy. Anyway, I live in Las Vegas, and I'm Bob, and I eat Vegas. Thanks for watching Bob Eats Vegas. Stay tuned. More to come.